Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th segment of Who I Am by uh, the Ice Academy of Montreal. Uh, we have a very special guest today. She is, you can see her already, she is uh, one of the founders and the head coach at the Ice Academy of Montreal. I see she has joined us already. Now let's see if we can invite her here. There she Hopefully this works. Can you all hear me all right? And there she is. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry, Marie maybe Paul. you hear my dog in the back. <laughs> How are you? No, no. <laughs> No worries, good. We're, we're very used to that. A lot of our skaters have dogs nowadays, so <laughs> that's, that's nothing new. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to talk to you. <laughs> Same here. Thank you for taking the time. Um, for those who are not in Montreal, the weather is beautiful. I'm sure Marie France hates me a little bit right now that she cannot be outside <laughs> enjoying the weather. Um, but, uh, well, thank you for being here. Marie-France, first of all, see... I wanted to congratulate you. Thank you. I wanted to congratulate you again. Um, you won the award of the Choreographer of the Year uh, by the PSA in U.S. Figure Skating this year. What does that mean to you? Well, I have to admit it was one of the weirdest award I've never won because I received <laughs> it from my living room. Um, but nevertheless, it's a great honor. Um, I was up against Shailen Bourne and David Wilson, which are two people that I admire. Um, David Wilson, I think, I, well, I like to say he's one of my mentors. So for me to get this um, this year was actually, it was, it was special. That's very nice to hear. Well, yeah, that's uh, one of the things that we're also all used to now. Everything happens online. Awards are given online <laughs> via Zoom. So, well, that's it. But nevertheless, congratulations again. Well, thank you. I also I would like to, um, to say that for me, my name was on this award, but I also uh, think my whole team is a huge part of the success we've had with choreography this season. Um, I might be at the core, the head and the heart of a lot of the concepts, but um, we have like amazing coaches that work uh, with every team to make my crazy ideas develop into, you know, through the season. And um, so special thanks also to Sam Chouinard that uh, participated in a lot of my, um, in a lot of choreography that I put together this season. Um, Sam, I mean, he's, he's my creative brother from another mother. So <laughs> when I, I tell him my ideas, my concept, it just really sparks something in him right away. He goes in studio and really develops like body language that really stimulates me <laughs> and also mm -hmm. the kids. Mm -hmm. So when they show up on the ice, they have a certain idea of a body language they want to use in the piece. So it's uh, the creativity behind it becomes really um, connected, like as even at the core of building a program, which is, I think it's, it's been a, a good experience to, uh, to work this way. Also, Patrice Lozon, my husband, and Rame Agenauer, as well as everybody else that's, that works with us. Um, everybody pitches in to make these kids really evolve through this season. So this award is really for the whole team. That's very nice of you to say. Yeah. And I have to say, it's really, it's really quite something. It's something very special to see uh, all of you working together. Marie-France, that's exactly what you would be doing right now. Usually <laughs> this is the phase that you uh, mount uh, close to 20 choreographers a year, I guess. Um, we are now, I think, the 10th week out of ice. Uh, maybe first, can you tell us what's the, what's the situation? We have read that ice rinks are slowly starting to open around, around the globe. What's the situation here in Montreal and what are your plans with the school? Well, um, you're right. Normally at this time of year, I'm 10 hours a day at the rink or if not in front of my computer trying to find music concepts and everything. 
but you can see by the color of my tan that I've not been in a breakup hall <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> um, uh, as for the deconfinement in Montreal, um, I'm happy to say I think things are looking much better now and um, uh, everything is going according to plan. Um, we're talking in, uh, in close relationship with Patinage Quebec and the Minister of Health and Sport to uh, make sure that if everything keeps going according to plan, we should be on the ice in a couple of days or uh, hopefully not more than two weeks, but this is hard to say. But I think if it keeps going well, um, we're looking at being on the ice mid-June. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think uh, we, all, we all really hope that uh, this works out and that everyone's on the ice as soon as possible. Yes. So and then and then you get started. Now you have all all these skaters who cannot wait to get on the ice, who cannot wait to get uh, new choreographies. And then what happens? How do you how how do you uh, start this process of of creating all these different choreographies for your different students? Well, with the ten weeks that we just you know all were at home, um, I've encouraged a lot of my teams actually to start the process already. And we've, you know, we've met and we've talked and a lot of the creative process is actually already started for most of the skaters. So um, I think once we'll get back on the ice, we'll just, you know, have to do a one week of getting them back in skating shape because their feet have been <laughs> off skates and probably in sandals now <laughs> for, for a long time. So we'll just exactly. do like a pro progressive return to the ice. Um, but everybody's plan is clear. Everybody has music. Um, I think we'll just be ready to, you know, to pound the hours and just get to work and get things done as quickly as we can with a smile because we all missed each other and we all missed it. So <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. Yes, everyone is super excited. Guillaume is sending many hearts to you. Everyone uh, can't wait yeah, to I see you them. again and work so with much. you on the ice. <laughs> of course. Um, Marie-France, I also wanted to ask you something a bit, uh, well, maybe more, more serious, but just today it was announced uh, that the first Junior Grand Prix that was supposed to be in Canada was also cancelled. Um, we know that the second Grand Prix, uh, Junior Grand Prix has been cancelled already. Andre Nepal has been cancelled. We we do believe that there is a chance that many more competitions this year will be cancelled. If if that happens, um, how are you going to deal with that situation when you know that uh, our skaters are not going to have a competition for a while? How are you going to keep them motivated and focused? And um, and yeah, how how do you intend to deal with that? Well, that's a great question because. Um... All these skaters, I mean, they're competitors and they're goal driven, right? So um, very much like when this qu uh, quarantine pandemic started, I think for us at Ice Academy of Montreal, it was important to give a goal to the kids to wake up every morning and to have like a certain structure and a discipline because without a goal, it's easy to go out of purpose and out of discipline and being a full three months doing nothing would have been harder to get back to training. Um, but all, I think everybody kept a really, really solid head, um, you know, having set goals. So um, this, this is important also for mental health, you know, just to, to set your eyes on something tangible. Um, now, knowing that the rest of this season, we, we don't know and we have no control. So I think the important thing for us is also to give a goal for the fall. If there shouldn't be any competition, we'll come up. We've started to talk and come up with, with something that will drive the skaters to train at a very high level, even though the first competition might be much later. Because let's not forget that Olympic season is coming very quickly. And I think we have to create 
those moments for the the kids to uh, to want to train at the same level as they would a um, couple of weeks before a, a big competition. Yeah, and yet not forget this is the pre-Olympic season, so um, the, the spots for Olympics w will be fought for uh, at at Worlds next year, which could be one of the next competitions that are happening, right? Yes, and I have to admit, like for a skater to start the season with the championship season and not having the challenger to settle into their program and not having the Grand Prix season uh, to gain prize money or whatever, it's it's pretty devastating. So um, we'll really, you know, put all our heads together. Every a way. I mean, uh, not just revenues, but also generate a, a bit of, uh, not competition, but stimulation. So, so they do have the competitive juice in them um, during the off season. Well, the, the not off season, but during that, the time they're not competing. So when they hit the championship season, then they'll be ready. Yes, and, and hopefully, and I'm pretty sure we'll also manage to uh, create something that uh, so our our and their their fans have something to see during a time where uh, there might be not so much going on in this world in general, but also in figure skating. Marie France, absolutely, we'll have to keep things going. Yes, yes. Marie France, <laughs> tell me also 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 you have been for ten weeks in. Um, confinement now um what have you been doing <laughs> um actually that's interesting because i've been working on doing less and being more so it was an interesting exercise more. that i that i've done um well first you know Anybody that knows me, I never took long breaks like this. Like this is all new to me. Even uh, when I gave birth to my daughter, Billy Rose, after eight days, I was ready to go back to work. And so, you know, I call wow. this my, my official maternity leave after nine years. I finally have a real maternity leave. Um, oh, but um, yeah, I've been spending actually a lot of time with my daughter. Um, she has no school, so I've been doing a little bit of homeschool, spending a lot of time with her. She's, she's been my little helper to find music and to, to do a lot of things. So I really, really appreciated connecting at a deeper level with her. Um, also, I've been in nature. I realized that in the past years, I'm mostly, you know, indoors. Um, so just, you know, sitting against a tree and breathing and meditating and just being more and doing less was actually really, really good. I started writing again, um, d uh, using much less electronics, much less electronics un unless I have to. And the last thing, um, we moved in <laughs> April, so that kept us quite busy. Very good. Yeah, you're, you're, you're uh, mentioning a few things that I think um, uh, for a lot of us um, can be uh, valuable or interesting. You're, you're spending more time or more intense time with, your, with, with Billy Rose. That is really nice. Also, I th find it interesting that you're saying you're using electronics less. I think most of us probably during this time used electronics more. Um, but especially now that at least here in Montreal, the weather is getting nicer. I think we really can uh, um, use that advice and maybe go in nature a little bit more. That's very well, nice. Well, I find for me at the beginning, I was watching a lot of the news and, and everything on social media about the pandemic and everything. And I found I was getting more anxious than anything else. So that was, I think, a turning point where I said, OK, if I need info, I'll, I'll know I can, you know, where to get it. But um, instead of focusing on the void and what we were not doing and what was not happening, I focused on completely other things. And it re really helped me center into myself and really calm down. And from that state, I was 
much more efficient in, um, in music research or in anything I really wanted to do. Um, it was important for me every day to do one thing for me, one thing for my family, one thing for my business. So mm -hmm. I had like little goals mm -hmm. like this, but also accepting that I can just like take time to, to realize a little bit everything that happened in the past 10 years because life has been so quick and so fast and a lot of traveling and a lot of success and ups and downs. And, and so, yeah, just let it settle in my body. And I think with this world pause, Nobody was getting ahead of anything or anyone, so it was just nice to relax into it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good point you're making there because that's something I realized as well, uh, looking at you guys already for your skaters. Life is so fast with the traveling and they come back from a competition. They cannot even digest everything that happened while for you it's like tenfold you could run from one thing to another you can't even look back and it's it's crazy so i guess it, it was really this time that finally allowed you to not look back but also just realize what what has happened maybe analyze in a little bit a different way and exactly look at your look at your life from a little bit uh, a, a bird uh, view maybe um I know this is something you've talked about a lot, but I would still um, like to hear from you again, or, or, or uh, maybe now with, with that uh, recul that you had um, <laughs> about your business. You have now, since soon a year, uh, it will be the Ice Academy of Montreal. You have been a skater yourself. You skated with Patrice uh, for a long time and very successfully, then opened the school. Tell us how this came about and, um, and, and where we are now, and then maybe what, what plans you have with the, uh, the Ice Academy of Montreal for the future. Well, um, we started our business really, I think we had a, a plan to, uh, to do Stars on Ice and some shows for, for a couple of years. And then at one point, I mean, doing being in 80 or 90 different hotel rooms, <laughs> A year just I got tired and and we wanted to have a, a kid so when we when I got pregnant in 2010 we thought that was the perfect time to to start a school um, so that was already 10 years ago <laughs> I guess this summer um, so Patrice and I started a school and uh, a couple of years later we've, we've had some success it was very good um, and a couple of years later, Dubreuil Lausanne School became Dubreuil Lausanne Hagenauer because Romain joined us. And then from that point, uh, we've had good success. And um, uh, I think our success was very quick and we've had a lot of demands. And then from that point last year, we said, okay, we cannot accommodate all the demands, so we have to do something different. So this is where the academy for us was created in order to be able to educate more people and set up a, a format where we can give seminars, where we can um, later hopefully have some of our kids that we can certify or train to become coaches um, or train younger coaches. Anyway, so we just wanted the format of academy of a school so we were able to educate and serve a bigger population in the skating community. That's that was our vision. <laughs> That's very exciting. Well, we are uh, definitely looking forward to uh, where that goes. Marie-France, thank you very much for joining us. This uh, was very, very interesting. Um, I would like to ask you to say a few words in French um, in the end, because after all, ah. we, are, we are from Montreal, <laughs> you, are, you are from here. So maybe you can tell uh, your fans a few words in French. Bon, ben merci à tout le monde, ceux qui m'ont suivi sur Instagram Live. C'était mon premier live, donc merci de m'avoir accompagné. <rire> Jamal, merci beaucoup aussi. Euh, et puis, euh, restez positifs, restez courageux. On arrive bientôt à la fin. Il fait beau dehors. <rire> On n'aura plus jamais un si long break dans notre vie, une si longue pause. Donc, euh, profitez-en un petit peu. Et puis, euh, gardez votre focus peut-être sur euh, qu'est-ce que... 
qu'est-ce que vous aimez, puis qu'est-ce qui est bien dans votre vie, et puis euh, le reste va s'arranger très bientôt. <rire> Thank you very much, bon Marie courage. Merci, Thank you very merci much. Damage. Enjoy Thank the you, weather. everybody. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.